I'd like to introduce you to Captain Alok Kumar and hopefully give you some insight in a very interesting career the captain has already done and uh, we are going to talk about his plans and his dreams going forward. But before we talk about shipping, I wanted to talk about the car of Captain Alok because in, when he was 34, actually, he sold his car. He sold his house with the permission of his wife, of course, and uh, he did all this to start his own business. So my first question to you is, of course, do you now, 15 years later, have, have a car again? I do have, but not in my name. Okay. It's in my wife's name. <laughs> it's in his wife's name. Very good. Fine. Um, no, but tell me, you started it all when you were 34. Actually, is it correct you even burnt your captain's license back then? I did. Because uh, when sailing, I have seen a lot of people, right from electrical officer, chief engineer, masters, going ashore. This is my last ship. I'm going to do something ashore. And you see the guy back again after three years. What happened? No, no, I made a printing press. I made a loss. I came back to sea. So they always had an exit door to come back to sea because $10,000 for an Indian guy sitting in a small place was too much money. It was tax free. So I thought if till the time of the license, I have no choice, you know, to go back to sea because one year, two year, three year pain is too much. I said, if I do not have a license, no exit door, I have to fight the fire here, what I have to do. <laughs> Very good. So, so it all started actually when you, you went to sea until about 2009 and 10, and then you expanded into the maritime industry. You started with, with services, right? Yes. So, so what kind of services were these when you started your business? Uh, I understand some diving or inspection. I thought a lot on this, yes. you know, because either you can do boat servicing, life raft servicing, but the, there was a limitation. If you do something in one port, you are limited to that area. I started with hull inspection. The situation was you sit in Bombay, Mumbai, but you get the license from the class to go and do the survey of the ship anywhere in the world. So although being an Indian sitting in a small place, but I can do and do a job in Brazil, China, South America, North America, and Indian labor was very cheap. So that time people used to charge, suppose to do a VLCC, $60,000. I will say, okay, I can do the job in $15,000 lump sum. Nothing else, you know. So that gave me, uh, put me in a position where I can do, do any job, any place in the world, any kind of vessel. So that is the first business I started with. And then you started into um, barge and tuck business at yes. a later stage? Yes. Uh, uh, from services, I did some, collect some money, saved a lot. <laughs> okay. And then the first tug I bought, uh, Tug Victoria. And I used to sail on a big ship. When I was buying, I saw a 30 meter tug, you know, yeah. that was less than our accommodation. But that is what I can afford. So the first tug I bought in 2015, mm -hmm. of course, with our own fund. The, no bank. I never knew what is EBITDA. I went to a bank asking for a loan. He says, what is EBITDA? I said, what is this EBITDA? I have no understanding of this. <laughs> so the guy told me this is EBITDA. Google it and you'll understand what is that. Yes. Um, let, let's first move on. We come back to, to one or the other aspect because this, this development is really impressive. Uh, today you own uh, um, bulk carriers. Yes. And uh, we are going to come to how, how you did it and how you financed it. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting story. Um, you, you're chartering in ships and you have now, with your group, Alphard Maritime or Alphard Group, you have um, operational and representative offices in India, Singapore, UAE, Australia, Greece and California. Yes. So, London as well. Before we come to your, to your business, it shows an enormous uh, entrepreneurial spirit and energy. What, what was the driver f and, and what gave you the energy? Uh, what was your vision when you were a young man to start all this? Uh, actually, my father had a small business, very small. You can't compare in today's world. But something is there in my blood, you know. I was sailing and once I became a captain, after three years, I said, what is this? Every time I go on ship, do the same job, come back. So I was thinking to do something on my own. And that's why in 2009, I decided that this is final. I have to start something on my own. And uh, then 
you know, you do something and there is always urge to the next step. What is next? What is next? What is next? So, service industry, what was the next? To own something, you know, where you can have. So, again, new tugs and then uh, Supramaxes. Finally, we came to Cape size bulk carrier. Uh, we bought an Aframax. So, a lot of things kept coming as we grew. That's very impressive. The first ship you bought, how, how did you finance that? With own fund. With own fund. I told you, no bank understood me. I never understood bank. What is EBITDA? I did not know who will fund me, you know, that time. But the first ship, then second, third, fourth, all smaller, you know. It was costing about one and a half to two million dollars each. So, I could fund it on my own. Yeah. And then learned. I hired some people who can make balance sheet and all and then bank started to come in. So nowadays the banks finance you, 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 you finance with Indian banks or, or UAE based or Singapore based banks? We had funding from Singapore, UAE, Indian banks but right now we are almost debt free. So the CAPES, the largest asset, those are done sale and lease back with one European fund and two with the Japanese fund. Mm -hmm. But other assets are all debt free, company on whole is a debt free company. And would Indian banks be an option for you to grow your business or for other Indian ship owners? Yes, Indian banks do finance on the vessel, but they understand with the things are within India, like offshore assets with ONGC contracts, they love it. They can give you a rate which no other foreign banks matches. But other things they don't, you say I buy a Supramax, you will be spot, they don't understand. If you go to them, if you have a five-year charter party with like Tata's or Aditya Birla's and they say this is money coming, this is going, they understand. Are they open for international clients as well or is this more Indian business than they're doing? In India, not for foreign clients, but government of India has come out with a more like a free zone, what you see in Dubai or other places. Uh, it's called Gift City. They are the specifically made this for uh, ship leasing and aircraft leasing. Okay. So none of these Indian regulations apply, neither for FEMA, RBI, income tax, GST, nothing applies there. So it's more like a free zone. You are free to come in and go out. Good. You have US dollar account, no rupees account, nothing. And why did you choose bulk as a segment to, to start your business with um, after, after these barges and, and, and a tuck business? Are you a bulker guy? And, and if so, why? I sailed maximum duration of my career on the bulk carriers. But being said that, that's the easier business to do. Tanker is too much complicated. Liabilities can be very high. Gas, LNG can't afford. Okay. So, uh, Initially, I started with small bulk. Bulk means 8,000, 10,000 vessels. We learned the ropes and then moved on to bigger assets. Yes, and, and your plans are to grow in this segment or are you, well, you seem to be pretty diversified, right? Um, it's, it's not a full service firm on all segments, but um, are, you, are your plans to expand your business to, to, to other segments as well? Yes, but time has to be right because I told you I'm not coming from a family with billion dollars behind my back, it's all created by me. So I take a very, very cautious approach where I'm putting my money or my investor money because uh, I can't go wrong, you know, there's no second chance for us. Yes. So whatever we are doing, say bulk, the first cap I bought, I got an opportunity, five year charter fixed at a very good rate, you can't imagine in today's rate. So I said, you sign the charter party, I will sign the MO together, you know. Although I am not ready to uh, sign the MO and put 10% deposit of two, two and a half million dollars without charter party. I said, first you sign and I will sign the MO. So you won't, back to back. You won't believe how many clients of ours don't do it like this, but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, we're not going to disclose any names here. Um, does your Balka business then have always or partly an Indian angle? So do you have a, a kind of an advantage because you know the markets, you have certain contacts with the players or is this totally independent if you want so? Uh, we are truly international, but being an Indian, I know Indian charters, Indian industrial houses. So we do business in India, but that is not Indian focused per se. We, we do business all over, we are doing all the routes, whatever, all the cargo, all the routes we are doing. Yes. We have about uh, 30 vis uh, vessels right from handy to Cape size on charter period, short period, long period, and our three capes. But India, yes, because we are Indian, we are sitting in India, we know these people, do we get first chance to do the business. We know inside informations. Yes, yeah. which is good. We, we come to India in, in a moment. Um, 
But first, tell us what is your expectation? How do you see the bulk market in, in present? Um, where do we stand? Relatively, relatively high asset prices compared to the charter rates. Are the charter rates going to come up? Are the asset prices going to come down? Is it time to invest? Uh, nobody can say. Everybody was dreaming month of May definitely is going to be good. Everybody, 90% people. May gone, June gone, market has not come up. So everybody is still thinking positive because of supply is low. It will come up, come up, but don't know. One thing's for sure, by July end, market does not come up, then you will see the asset price coming down. Already last one month, you will not see a lot of S&P deals happening in the market. Uh, but still, the asset value is much higher than the current market. So, okay. So you have plans for the future. Describe how, how does your group going to look like in, in three to five years from now? Uh, my target given to my people and to myself is a maintain ratio of 1 is to 10 for owned and chartered internets. As I told you, we have three cape sizes, so we have uh, about 30 vessels chartered in. By end of 2025, I want to have 100 in water. 100? Yeah. 10, 10 owned, 90 chartered in. Yes. So the ratio will be maintained throughout. Okay. When we buy, when we charter, it all depends on the market condition, asset price. But it's not that every one year you have to buy two assets, nothing like that. The right time, right asset value, right charter party market, but it will happen for sure. Yes. Whatever I have dream, it has always come true, so it will come true. Yes. <laughs> Uh, of course. So your operation is kind of uh, split among several uh, countries, several continents. Um, briefly compare what are the advantages in operating part of your business from India as opposed to uh, Singapore, for instance, or Dubai? Uh, India, still labor is much cheaper compared to Singapore, US, London, other places. Yes. So what a strategy we do Anything which can be done remotely is done from India. We have people in Singapore, uh, London, other places only when, because you need the chartering manager to be in that reason to meet the customer, get the things done, but very few people. Anything accounting, admin, HR, anything which can be done remotely, we sit, make the people sit in India because my cost is about 30% what you do in Europe or other person. So Singapore, an accountant you have for $5,000, I pay 50,000 rupees. So it's much cheaper, you know. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, that's, that's, that's nice to hear. So let's come back to India. Um, uh, I think uh, one of the panels Jovi uh, moderated yesterday, they also briefly talked about India. From my perspective, it's still interesting to see that India, as meanwhile the biggest country from a population point of view worldwide, doesn't play a dominant or very visible role in, in international shipping. What is your explanation for this and will this change? Uh, see, I have my friends, colleagues in uh, all kind of shipping industry and what we realize, first, we are a seafaring nation, you know, you will see a lot of Indian crew, officers, and very good LNG masters, LPG master, chemical tanker, lot of Indian guys, very qualified. But somehow we only think to have a good job and the next who want to be entrepreneur, they only think to get into the service industry. You will see ship management company, supplying surveying, all these we Indians are there. I don't know why we do not gain that escape velocity to come out of it and buy a ship, you know. So as we never think of getting into ownership, but things are changing, you know. Uh, maybe in future people will come. Uh, as India had one uh, government uh, organized shipping corporation that owned ships. Other than that is only one company, third, fourth generation, the legacy business. So there's no young blood coming in there. Now people are coming in, but no, again, uh, the, anybody who is buying ship has been in shipping business of ports or importer, but no somebody coming from seafaring or banking or somebody who comes and buys some ships and uh, come into the market. Mm -hmm. But as situation changing, I hopefully uh, people will start to buy ships as in Indian owners. Well, you are a good example for that, um, that, that there's a lot of uh, dynamics and possibilities in this country. We heard Marine Money plans to have a ship finance conference in Mumbai, if I remember correctly. Is Mumbai the place, uh, yeah. shipping wise in India? If you ask my suggestion, yeah. Mumbai is the place. Yeah. Because India, Mumbai is anyway we call it the financial capital of yes. the India. But shipping, especially if you say 90% is in Mumbai. You will feel uh, maybe one broker or two brokers or operating house, few people sitting in mm -hmm. Delhi. 
or some crewing people because now crew coming from tier two, tier, tier three cities. But otherwise, all financials matter, owners, everybody sitting in Bombay. So the last two short questions. What's the biggest challenge for you as a life of a ship owner? Ha, market. You know, you, nobody have timed the market, but everybody try to time the market. So that is what we keep trying that we should not go wrong. You know, whatever we have created, first preserve that. And then again, we want to grow faster. So it's not easy task. We keep thinking, you know, you think something, tomorrow something else happens. So we try to protect the capital first. So wherever we invest, we try to be sure that we will not go wrong. And the biggest fun in the life of an Indian ship owner? Every day is fun, you know. <laughs> it's your state of mind. You don't look for fun somewhere else. <laughs> you, if you feel that you are happy, you are always happy. So we don't look it outside. <laughs> Lovely. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Alok, and I think we will hear back from him very soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done.